Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We've been studying together in the first epistle to the Corinthians, verse by verse, and in our last study, we were in chapter 8, and we were looking at a subject that deals with the matter of faith and conscience between us uh, believers in the body of Christ. It's a fascinating chapter. It's one that I think that is really drives right at, at the heart, the very heart of our core relationship with one another, how we react, how we respond to one another in the body of Christ. Under this present dispensation of grace, which as a side note, I believe is about to end. Now we did make it through the spring uh, timeline uh, from May 14 to June 15, uh, where we thought that perhaps that the Lord would take us out of here, uh, but we're still here, so now we're looking uh, toward the Feast of Trumpets in the fall. Uh, and all of that time in between, we believe that we are still in a high watch time and that uh, 2022, there's, there seems to be at least some evidence that points to this year as being uh, the year of our Lord's return, but uh, we trust Him, uh, we rely on Him uh, in all things, depend upon Him in all things. We are absolutely satisfied uh, to be uh, involved in whatever our Lord has planned for us. We will not go through one day of Daniel's 70th week. If you've watched my videos on, on that, uh, you'll understand how that I've uh, staunchly stood behind the whole pre-tribulation rapture uh, view, in which I believe it's the only view which is supported by Scripture. It's the only view that will stand the test of, of sound biblical exegesis. So we're going to, until then, we're going to continue on in our study in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. That's going to take us other places, uh, including Romans chapter 14, which I may do a quick review of, but we're looking at the matter of conscience and faith, and that among uh, the brethren. So let's open with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, I just come into your presence by means of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit, so very aware of our limitations, just how little we know, but that we long to grow in grace and knowledge of you. I just ask that you would seal to our hearts that which is truth, filtering out all the foolishness, and it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. We've seen in, uh, in uh, pre our previous uh, uh, studies that love builds us up. That's God's love. Uh, that, uh, and there are uh, goats and sheep. Uh, there are no crossovers. There's two species of homo sapiens on earth. These are the children of God and the children of the devil. That's not a common belief, but that is the biblical position. There's goats, there's sheep, there's tear, there's wheat. And you have always been either one or the other. And there's no crossovers. Uh, Jesus said, Every plant which my Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Matthew chapter 15, verse 13. And he could not have been more clear. Note that what that also says is though those that God planted can't be rooted up. And uh, Jesus told the Pharisees without apology, Ye are of your Father the devil, John 8, 44. And when his disciples came to him saying, well, are you aware that, that the, they didn't really like much like what you said? You know, the Pharisees were offended when they heard you say that. Jesus said, let them alone. Leave them alone. Now, we don't know whose father is the devil, but Jesus certainly did. And so the truth remains that there are no crossovers. God had His family. He has a right to a family. He begat us. We're His children. And there's children that are strong, children that are weak, and opinions vary 
from kindergarten to graduate school, some are against long hair on men or short hair on women, some are okay with Christmas, some are not, or they differ on baptism or a thousand other things. But Paul said, I place no other burden upon you except you abstain from idol worship. You know, and I hear all the time, you know, I've always heard, you know, people say, well, God doesn't change. Well, that is true. He, his nature doesn't change, but God's dispensations change. We are not under law, but grace. We know there is but one God, and that the Father and Christ Jesus are one, and that an idol is nothing. Uh, we don't trust in or seek comfort in idols. Uh, we know that all men have a conscience. I don't care who you are, whether you're a sheep or a goat. But this is about God's family, folks. And to wound a brother's conscience is to sin against Christ. So I think that's something that we ought to take note of. That causes him to stumble. It causes our brother to stumble. An example would be, you know, the stronger suggests that the weaker should be like him. You know, he knows that there's but one God and that an, uh, an idol is nothing, okay? Whereas the weaker doesn't have that knowledge and he believes an idol to be something. And so it's all about conscience and principles and, and scruples. It, it is not Christ plus something such as circumcision, which we, we see in Galatians, and an idol can be anything that a Christian trusts in rather than God. Uh, anything that brings you comfort, uh, you know, investments, for example, a career, a home, you know, even a hobby. We can idolize just about anything. And that's what the Corinthians were surrounded by. You know, they were surrounded by numerous false gods, Roman idols, uh, uh, Greek idols, you know, even a man, Caesar, can become an idol. You know, there really are, as the text says, there really are many gods and many lords. But there's only one God, one true God. We are children of God. We're members of His family. But any family, every family has children in it who are weak or strong. That's just the way that it is, okay? Uh, whose opinions on matters widely vary and who are at different stages of development and growth, okay? From kindergarten to graduate school, okay? Uh, sometimes the hardest thing to do is to you know, deal with our brothers and sisters in Christ. But how can I boast in my faith when my brother is struggling with his? And we know that we're not under law. We know that we're under grace. We know that all things are indeed lawful, but not all things are... are are profitable not all things are expedient okay so here's my brother you know who believes that that bowling is a sin so if I tell him well he's an idiot for believing that bowling balls are sinful and if, you know if he had any common sense you know he'd just he'd just bowl he should bowl you know where that his bowling is not of faith and he bowls and his conscience is condemned have I acted in love well, no, I haven't. If I, if I push my brother to operate or function apart from faith, I wound his conscience and therefore sin against Christ. You know, think Christmas and Halloween. Some Christians are opposed to, to these holidays, these feasts, these festivals, these, these you know, holy days. Some, some Christians celebrate these days, some do not. Some think that, that Christmas is pagan. You know, and then so we shouldn't have anything to do with that. If you're serve if you don't believe in Christmas trees, folks, okay? Or Christmas presents or, or anything, you know, Santa Claus, anything like that, or little green elves or, or whatever, if you don't believe in that, if you don't believe in Rudolph the red nosed reindeer, all right. If you just if you feel like that you must stay away from that because that dishonors God and if that's the faith that you have toward God if that is how you serve God okay in your conscience if that is what your conscience has driven you to okay I have no right to tell you that you're an idiot for not putting up Christmas lights okay 
I am, the text says that what I'm doing is I'm making you of less value than, a, than another brother in Christ. You know, my brother in Christ that doesn't have, who's like me, who doesn't have any problem with Christmas lights or a Christmas tree, you know, now he's really, he's, he's, he's kind of, you know, he's going the right way. He's, you know, me and him, we're, we're, we're in sync together. You know, we both understand that there's no, no God but one God our, and, and, our, and one Lord, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have a problem with it, but our other brother does. But, you know, me and this other brother, we, we, we're in agreement. You know, we don't have any problem with that. And so we, we tend to shun this other brother or sister. We, we make less of them. The text literally says that they are to us of less value. Okay? Why? Because they don't have the faith that we do. Dearly beloved, we have all received a measure of faith. Your faith is not the same as mine. My faith is not the same as someone else's. We are at different stages of development and growth. Folks, what about the Christian who's what about the Christian who was just born again yesterday? How do you how do you how does that Christian have fellowship with a brother in Christ who's been in, in the body of Christ, who's been a believer, who's trusted in the Lord for 50, 60, 70 years? How do these two get along? How? Well, it's simple. We don't have ex those expectations of one another. We act in love. Okay, not judgment. Not judgment. The text says that the one that is looking at me is having the faith to eat all things when they don't have the faith to eat all things. And therefore, since they don't have the faith to eat all things, then neither should I have the faith to eat all things. The text says they are judging me. Krino, okay, is the word in the Greek, making a judgment against me. Okay? And they're not to do that. Likewise, I am not to be so condescending toward my brother, not to look at my brother as having uh, less value than another brother because he doesn't have the faith, faith to eat all things as I do. Okay? It is about conscience. The Lord is concerned with our conscience. It's for conscience' sake. We can ruin a brother, destroy a brother, says, is what the text says, but we can't, we can't, we're not going to send a brother to hell, okay, by putting a stumbling block in his, in his way, in his path. The word there means ruin, okay, spiritual ruin. We can actually ruin a brother, ruin his conscience, defile his conscience, cause him to become distraught, okay, by insisting or demanding that he have the same faith that we have. Well, it's okay for me to bowl, so it's okay for you to bowl, and if you have this thing against bowling balls, then you're just, you're an idiot, okay? Now, I am fairly positive that most of the Christians that you know today, and the, the state of the church in, in which it exists today is a religious system based on human merit which does precisely what I'm saying we shouldn't do. We walk alongside one another and we judge one another in those terms. And we're not to do that. This is what our text is saying. I want to quickly read through Romans chapter 14. I know it's a, it's a, it's a little time consuming here and it's, a, and it's just a brief, a quick overview here, but I think it will help shed some light on our present study in the eighth chapter of 1 Corinthians. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believes that he may eat all things, another who is weak eats herbs. Let not him that eats despise him that eats not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. 
Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he stands or he falls. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteems one day above another, another esteems every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regards the day regards it unto the Lord, and he that regards not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eats, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none of us lives to himself, and no man dies to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, as it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteems anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he that in these things serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eats with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbles, or is offended, or is made weak. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he, blessed is he, that condemns not himself in that thing which he allows. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. You know, Christians, uh, I think, have for the longest time, maybe probably since the very beginning, have, I think, for the, in general, in, in the main, for the most part, have just a, the whole, a whole totally wrong concept of sin itself, of what sin is. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Most people think that to, you know, to sin, you have to perform some action. You have to, to actively get up and, and walk over here and you have to, to steal something or, or you have to lie, you have to cheat, you have to kill, murder, uh, I don't know, whatever is on that list, long list of, of garbage. You've got to do something in order to, to sin. Sinning is... Well, just doing anything that God hates, and He hates a whole lot of stuff, so there's a whole lot of stuff you can do that's, that's, that's sin. Now, that may be true in a particular sense, but in the most strictest sense, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. If you are not believing and trusting God, you're sinning. You can be sitting at home, on the couch, on the sofa, with your arms crossed, staring off in the into nothing, okay? And if you're not trusting God, you're sinning. I want you to try, if you can, to, to wrap your mind around the fact that God considers unfaithfulness, not tr that is, not trusting Him. He, he actually calls it sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. 
Now, I mentioned previously, we do not all have the same faith. Well, that, that kind of goes should go without saying. I mean, we, we know that we are at different stages of development. We have young Christians. We have older Christians. We have those that are mature, we, who really understand the Word, who've spent a lot of time in study, who spent a lot of time in, in this book, and we have Christians who do not. We have Christians that are more carnal, more fleshly, more earthly-minded than heavenly-minded. They've set their affections on things below, not on things above. And really what that text is saying is they're setting their minds on the flesh and trying to please God in the flesh on, on the earthly things, not that which is above, which is Christ, His finished work, where He sits at the right hand of the, of the Father. There's so many varieties of Christians. How is it that we've come to stereotype all Christians? In the sense that we look at our brother or our sister in Christ and because they're not behaving the way we are, they're not thinking the way we are, they're not acting the way that we are, they're not believing the way that we are, there's somehow there's some flaw in that individual when the honest truth, folks, is that the only reason you even have any faith toward God is because He gave it to you. He gifted you with that faith. He gifted me with the faith that I have. He gifted you with the faith that you have. You didn't muster up that faith on your own. Okay, Faith comes through hearing and hearing through the Word of God. If you're, out, if you're some Christian out there and you just really are longing to grow in knowledge of, of in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and you're really wanting to grow in your understanding of the Word and you're really wanting to have to grow in faith and your faith be stronger and your, your, the real intent of your heart, the, the, your deepest, most innermost desire is to grow in faith. I think God will honor that. But I, you need to try to understand that the, the, the faith that you have now, at the present time, God says is sufficient. That my grace is sufficient for you. We, that, that means that we can be content at any given stage of our development. Are, are you following me? Uh, to be content, okay, is not something that's reserved for the special sort of select few, you know, those who are really enlightened, those who, are, who have really studied, those who really are smart. They're, 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 they're the smart ones. They're not the, they're not the dumb ones, you know. They're, they're the ones that, that, you know, God really reserves His best for, okay? Let me tell you something, folks, and I don't know if you'll ever hear it anywhere else. But I'm not going to lie to you. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. I don't care how much faith you have. I don't care how much ability that, lie, that there is that lies within you to trust God in every circumstance that He brings into your life to test the, the faith that He's invested in your life. I don't care. I am not looking to, to increase another believer's faith based upon what I believe that it, he, he, where he ought to be when it comes to my own faith. You know, comparing himself to me and me looking at my life and my faith and, and looking at my brother and saying, look, you know, you've been a Christian for, I don't know, X number of years here now. And, I, you know, I just think it's kind of stupid that, that you're this, this old in the Lord and you don't know these things. You don't know this, this thing or the other thing, you know, such and such thing, okay? You, know, you ought to be more mature by now. You ought to be, grow, come on, grow up, all right? Grow up. You know, it's, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't have a, come out of a huge family, but I did have some, you know, brothers and sisters, and, and they were younger than me. 
when I was a child, uh, I, I don't recall ever really looking at the, my younger siblings and, 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 and saying, you know, you're just, you're just stupid, okay? You know, I mean, you know, you ought to, you ought to have the, the mentality, you ought to have the mindset, you ought to have what I have as at the age of 15. You know, here, I'm 15 years old, okay? I'm, I'm a freshman or a junior in high school, and, you know, you're still in, in grade school. Okay, well, and you ought to be where I'm at. Are you getting this? Folks, listen, dearly beloved. God has his children who are in kindergarten. All right. Now, you may not like that, but there was a time in which you were in kindergarten as well. He also has those in graduate school. It's when the one in kindergarten looks at the one in, in graduate school and judges him and, and says, well, you know, you're basically in, in, a, in a very real sense, what he's saying is, that, you know, look, your faith is just a little too strong, okay? I mean, your faith, you actually have this faith that I don't have, and this faith is going to lead you down the wrong path. Well, the, he's, he's wrong to do that. But see, it, it works both ways. God didn't leave, let the weaker brother or the stronger brother off the hook, okay? Here, okay? There's enough blame to go around. I don't care if you're the weaker brother. I don't care if you're the stronger brother. There's the admonition toward us as believers in the body of Christ who have been graced with, gr given grace upon grace. And if you followed my, my videos for any length of time, and you've, you've really followed us through these verse-by-verse -verse studies through these different various books of the New Testament, uh, you've seen that we have received grace upon grace. That, that grace just superabounds in our lives. God has nothing against you, okay? He has nothing against my brother or my sister in Christ. So why should we have? Why should we have? Why do we look upon one another and judge one another based upon our own experience, our own faith, our own dedication, our own devotion? Okay? Why can't I accept a weaker brother in faith and in understanding that, that we all belong to Him, that we are all members of His body, that He died in our place, that this is my brother for whom Christ died. Okay? He's not been left out in the wilderness. He's not been forgotten. He's not lagging behind. He's not coming behind in any spiritual gift or grace, as I pointed out in a, in, in a previous text that we looked at. Okay? Not, not a one of you is lacking. Not a one of you is coming. I have not received anything from God that you haven't received. And likewise, you haven't received anything from God that I have not received. And so whatsoever is not of faith is sin. That's the hard, cold reality of it. You don't have to be doing anything but doubting God to be sinning. And here's our brother who doesn't have all faith. And here's us. We'd like to think that we have all faith. I think sometimes we'd like to believe that we have all faith. We don't have all faith. Not a one of us has all faith. Not a one of us has reached that, that peak, that pinnacle that, of success to where that we can say with all confidence that we've arrived, we've gotten a, a, I guess we've gotten, ahead of, we've gotten there ahead of everybody else. You know, we just made it. Man, I mean, you know, and, and we picked us up, ourselves up by our own bootstraps, and man, we, we really made it. Here's our brother who's lagging behind, at least in our, in our sort of twisted way of thinking. He's lagging behind. He's not really lagging behind, but we think he is. And whatsoever is not of faith is sin. It is absolutely true. I, keep, I, I know I keep repeating this. I'm, I'm really blowing this up, pushing this, exaggerating this point for you to see this because it is so vitally important to understanding what we're looking at. 
I don't think that there's a, a better example to try to help explain this. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So that brother, including me, all the brethren, all the brethren, every brother, every sister in the body of Christ is sinning because they don't have all faith. And faith is a gift from God. It comes from God. It's not something that we muster up on our own. Therefore, on, at least on our end, Christ dealt with sin on His end, at least on, from our on perspective, when it comes to our walk, our relationship with the Lord, we need to do something about that sin. Okay, We need to understand and realize that the first command given us in Romans 6.11 is to reckon ourselves dead to sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we don't have all faith. We don't have it. And whatsoever is not of faith is, is sin. That faith comes from God and God alone. We don't muster up that faith on our own. In fact, we can study till, we're, till we pass out. Okay, And God the Holy Spirit is not obligated. Hear me. He's not obligated to just because you've studied to enlighten you to any single truth in that book. Not a one. It, it is not something where that if we meet the, 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 the conditions, if we qualify in some way, if we study hard, and I understand folk, the word says study to show yourselves approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I understand that. That's what God desires we do. What I'm saying is, is the Holy Spirit is not obligated to do anything just because you think that that's what you need, okay? There's something very special, very dynamic taking place here as far as the leading and guide, guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's not, it's not, we are not the captain of our destiny, okay? We don't determine our own fate, okay, when it comes to all of this. Look, we either have a God, an all-knowing, all-loving, supremely sovereign God who's in control of every aspect of our lives, who knows the paths that we take, that when He's tested us, we shall come forth as gold. That's either true or it is not. God has not left it up to our own devices to become spiritual, quote-unquote, through any activity on our own part. We are all members of God's family. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm talking about sheep. I'm talking about wheat here. Those that, that are members of God's family, we're all members of God's family. But we're all at different stages of development. And we're expected to get along. God desires that we, that we live with, in peace with one another. Okay? It's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what it's about. I can have the greatest fellowship with the weakest brother, just is the same fellowship I can have with the stronger brother. Why? Why? Why is that? For the same reason that, that me as a college student can walk into a kindergarten and have a great time with these little kids. And they can have a great time with me. But see, that's not how we operate. Unfortunately, tragically, sadly, the church, since its inception, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest, okay, right from the start, right from the very beginning, we start judging one another. And here we are looking at a text, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, in which that is not allowed, okay? We're looking at matters with, that deal with faith and conscience. Now, if, if what I'm saying is true, that whatsoever is not of faith is sin, and actually I'm not saying that, that's what the text says. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Listen, folks. <laughs> What are we to do then when we see sin in our lives? And I'm talking more specifically about sin which is not 
a, the result of non-faith, which is not trusting God, not depending upon God, we find ourselves in a circumstance, in some situation, to where that we we find it very difficult. In fact, in 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 some cases, as far as we're concerned, it's impossible to trust God. We just don't have it in us to trust God. Through that, you know, anything but that. Okay, I mean. Lord, I I can handle anything. Just don't let don't just don't let that happen. And, you know, and that that thing that that happens. And so, are are we to kick ourselves in the behind, folks, because we didn't have the ability to trust God when we thought that we could? Now, now there's an opening. You just swung the door wide open for guilt to come in. Guilt will flood in. Okay into your life, okay, if you do that. You know, I should have known. I, I should have had the faith. I just, you know, and, and you hear that all the time. Christians talking about, well, he just didn't have the faith. You know, he didn't pray hard enough, you know. If he'd had the faith, you know, the situation would have been different. You know? I've often said that what God desires the most of us is that we trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But there are times in your life and in mine where the we don't we realize we come to realize we don't have all faith, and whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And since whatsoever is not of faith is sin, how are we to categorize that sin? How are we to deal with that sin? How are we to look at that sin? God tells us in Romans six eleven to reckon ourselves dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus. Until next time, I love you all, I truly do. Rest in Him, and thanks for watching.